Greetings YouTube, Sega Zombie here and welcome to another episode of the Sega Wall Pickups. Yeah, it's only a week or two ago since I've done my last Pickups video, but we've got some really nice tasty bits. Some more Sega to put in this wall, yes! Love that, buzzing off that. Not forgetting about the Spectrum, I've not shot a Specky video in a couple of weeks or so. But there is loads in the pipeline. I've got so many games to show. I've got a massive box full of nostalgic memories to go through. And also Hit Squads. There's a Hit Squads video imminent. So keep your eyes peeled, guys and girls. Um, wow, what a week. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen um, YouTuber of the Month and that I've been nominated. I'm not going to go into that too much because I've already done a video on that last couple of days. But just to say a massive thank you to all of you so far that's voted for me. Come on, let's get this zombie horde in to invade. And let's bring YouTuber for a second month in a row, YouTuber of the Month, back to the UK. Oh yeah, let's do it. There's some fantastic nominees, guys. So go and check it out and go and put your votes in. Simple as that. Please give your support. Um, yeah, where are we going to start? Like I said, some lovely pickups. I keep looking at one in particular because I'm just blown away with it. I can't wait to show that off, guys. But we're going to start with the charity shops. Now, my charity shop video that i done to last week, beginning of this week, has gone down an absolute storm. I was really nervous in doing that video, if I'm being honest with you guys, because I'm kind of out of my comfort zone, I suppose. Something very different for me. But it's gone down really well. I've had some really great comments, some fantastic support on that. So I might keep that like a regular series. It's not going to be that frequent, probably maybe once, twice a month. I'll do a little update on, on the charity shop pickups because it seems to have gone down really well. So there'll be more on that. Um, but yeah, talking with charity shops, these are the games that I've picked up from the charity shops and starting with an original Xbox game, and that is Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Never played this one. I think I played the second one, was it? Um, yeah, the second one. It was like a side scroll and beat em up type of game. Not sure if this is the same. Um, in fantastic condition. This one cost uh, one pound, guys. I tend to hold out on this sort of stuff, sort of these common titles um, until I see them in charity shops in their sort of like shelves and they have every lot like, three for a pound or two for a pound and they mix the games in but this charity shop and um, they don't do that everything's a pound pretty much but this is in such good condition it really is in fantastic nick all complete minty fresh so I had to get it guys for a pound it's going in the collection with the ever-growing OG Xbox. Don't know if I like this OG Xbox. <laughs> Xbox will do for me, I think. I don't know. Oh, on to the next, and I ain't going to disappoint some of you. Yes, we've got some Nintendo Wii boys. What have we got? First up, we have got Boom Blocks, a Steven Spielberg game. An EA title. Good little blast this, um, all complete as you can see, in fantastic condition from the same charity shop, one pound paid. It's got some nasty sticker residue there, but I can get that off with a bit of rubbing alcohol, I'm sure. And um, yeah, going back to the game, this is quite a good game. I never played this back in the day. It's got a very um, addictive, you know, the type of fair, these puzzle games. You know they're good if you want to keep playing it and play some more. Quite a unique concept, a cross between Tetris and Jenga, I'd say. Yeah, it plays a lot like Jenga. Really enjoyed having a bit of a blast on this, and my daughter in particular, she really liked this one. So that is Boom Blocks. We'll put that up on the shelf. And then sticking with the Nintendo Wii and a film that I absolutely love. A great film. I've not watched it in a couple of years. I might need to give this a watch now, picking up the game. Um, as a lot of you will know that watch my Spectrum videos and things like that, I absolutely love movie licensed games. I know there's some stinkers, but there were some amazing games too. And if I'm a sucker for them, if I see them, I think it's a genre of game really in modern gaming that's really missing. 
and I miss them sort of games. But anyway, back to what I was talking about. We've got Scarface. This one definitely won't be for the children. It's an 18 certificate. And I'm sure I'll get round to playing it. Like I said, I absolutely adore the movie. It kind of looks like a GTA free Roman type of game. Looks quite kind of nice graphically. So really looking forward to giving Scarface a blast. And again, one pound guys. So that's going up on the shelf. And then we move on to a family classic now. Now, growing up as a kid, and it's no different now with my own young family. We adore a one board game. We really do as a family. And that is Monopoly. So for a pound, I had to pick up Monopoly featuring classic and world edition boards. So yeah, Monopoly's been released on pretty much every single system going. Not had a chance to give this one a blast yet with the kids. I'm sure we will get round to it. But again, a pound. Had to get it. It's in absolutely fantastic condition. It's even got um, advertisement for... What game is that one? Here and now. Oh yeah, the World Edition. Um, yeah, so it's got all the leaflets. Great Nick, one pound, it's going in the Wii collection. It's got to be done. And then finally, sticking with board games, because I seem to have a thing about board games. Um, for you, those of you that watched my um, last charity shop video, I'm, I've picked up loads of board games, so it's obviously ingrained in this mind of mine. So I picked up this one as well. Um, it's going to be shovelware, no doubt, but Family Game Night Volume 2. Loads of classics on there. We've got Jenga, Operation, Connect 4, Bop It, and Picturica. So, yeah. I'm sure me and the kids, you know, at the end of the day, this game costs £1, guys. If this keeps my kids occupied for an evening, that's a pound well spent in my book. So, that's another Nintendo Wii game added to the ever-growing Nintendo Wii collection. What I might do at the end of this video, actually, is I might take a shot of the Wii game so far so you guys can see where it's, um, how it's coming along. You know, I'm really liking the Wii collection at the minute. Next up, guys, is an item that I purchased a few weeks back now, and it's been so frustrating, this one. Um, it's an item that I've been waiting to get in the collection for a long time. It does turn up, but it's never in a good condition or it's always commanding quite a high price, more than what I want to pay anyway. And it's sticking with board games and vintage board game stuff, and that is this. And that is Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic's Mountain Quest. Now, I picked this up off a Facebook group um, a few weeks back now, and unfortunately, what I'm going to do... I knew um, straight away that it had the balloon missing. The guy had this up for £15, I think I managed to get it for off him in the end. I didn't mind that the balloon, the hot air balloon piece was missing. It doesn't affect the game so much. Um, you can just about make it out on the box there. This in the photographs was in quite good condition, the box, and it's been... I don't know if you can see it there, but yeah, it, it's been all squished because it was put in a bloody bin bag. That really winds me up. Something this old. And not only that, this is a casualty of the postal system, guys. Let me just put the box there for a minute. And um, yeah, here she is. The Sonic Magic Mountain. Now, for those of you with an eye for detail, will see that this is cracked down here. And this is the result of it being sent in a bin liner with no protection. Here's a picture of that, guys. Yeah, gutted. I instantly got on to the seller. He refunded me after a little bit of time. It took some time. Um, he instantly got back to me and said, do you want a full refund or a partial refund? At the time, I looked on eBay and there was someone in... Um, it wasn't in the UK, but there was someone selling spare parts. That has since disappeared, which I'm gutted about. Um, and in the end, he gave me a half-price discount. So this cost me about seven, eight pounds. And I thought, a bit of Gorilla Glue, I'll glue this back on, and away we go. It comes with the original ball bearing. I have left the batteries in it, haven't I? Start at the start, you push it along, it will travel up the steps, like so. And yeah, you get the gist. I'm sure many of you have seen this. I can never get past that bloody bridge. 
But the problem we've got, guys, let's turn that off for a minute because it's doing me, me swede in. God. <laughs> um, yeah, the problem we've got is where I've glued this swinging arm here. Um, when the ball makes contact, it stays put, and what it's supposed to do is swing round and drop the ball. Now, if any of you guys have this, I need to find out if this is the correct ball bearing. I'm, I'm struggling to find information on it. If any of you have got a broken one of these and want to sell me um, the swinging arm, that would be brilliant. That's where the um, hot air balloon's supposed to sit. It doesn't affect the game, but it's just a bit of cosmetics that I'd like to replace. This has become a, a project of mine. I want to get this complete. Um, if in the meantime, a lovely minty complete one turns up, then happy days. Great little game. Loads of you will find it, look, think this looks familiar. Um, Kong Man was the original Tomy release of this, and they just um, redesigned it and put Sonic the Hedgehog on it. The Kong Man one, believe it or not, is the one I remember. Um, I never had this one back in the day, but I thought this would make a really nice display piece, even if it doesn't get played. That's why I wasn't that bothered, but since I've glued this, and oh, it's just one of those annoying things that you just want to get finished. So that is Sonic's Mountain Quest. What I'm going to do is put the box down here, and we'll keep that up there like so. So yeah, sort of kind of glad I finally got it in the collection, but I'm not happy with it, guys. Like I said, comments below if any of you can help me out with this. I'd really appreciate that, guys. And that moves us on to an eBay purchase now. And as we do, I think I've mentioned this before, you know, late at night, you're bored, you're killing time. You know, you look through your searches on, on eBay and you see new stuff that's been listed and you put silly little bids on. I do it all the time. You know, I bid a five, a max on things. And sometimes these things will um, come through. You never know, you know, majority of the time they don't. But every now and again, one will slip through the net and you'll end up getting it for a great price. And that brings us on to this package here. Now this turned up, I wasn't expecting any mail um, except for this one game. So I have opened it, guys, because I thought oh, I was the game. And then I noticed there's more in there. So I've left it put and I thought we'll do a um, what's in the box because I haven't done one of them in a while. And um, we'll see what's in the jiffy bag. <laughs> so, yeah, the game we're talking about is this. Oh, wow. There's a note in here as well. So I just put that on my lap. Yeah, the game we're talking about is Mike Ditka. I can never say this, guys. Mike Ditka Power Football. Now, I already own this on the um, ballistic set, if I can find it. Where are you? There you are. So, I already own this version of it. Mike Ditka Power Football for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive systems. So, as you can see, this one is minty, actually. It's in fantastic condition. So, I already own that one. But this one's different. So I put a cheeky bid in of a few pounds. It was it started at like one pound, something like that, 99p. I put a cheeky bid in and no one else bid on it and I won it. It's um, really tough to get that. Don't know what variant it is. I'm sure Glenn Edwards can tell me, can't you, Glenn, what, what variant this is? But I don't normally do variants, but if I see them, I'll, I'll have a little cheeky bid. I've won it. It's all come in a bag. We'll take out of there. It's in pretty good condition. We all know how these Accolade ballistic boxes can get. It's got no inner um, tray, which is a shame. But for the price, I'm not going to moan. Oh, what we got in there? Got a little added bonus by the looks of it. Firestorm Thunderhawk 2 for the PlayStation. Fantastic. That's a game I played a lot, actually, on the Sega Saturn. Wow. And yeah, it's got its manual. All in great condition. The sport games, you tend to find the manuals and that are like untouched. So it's a common occurrence with sport games. But yes, in fantastic condition. Really chuffed to add that to the ballistic accolade 
subset on the um, Sega wall. Brilliant. So what else have we got in here, guys? Let's read the note. Hi, Scott. Big fan of your channel. I've chucked in a couple of bits for you. Inside the Mega Drive game is a PS1 game I think you might like. You got that right. I do like that game. Two Wii games for your girls. Also chucked in a few Wii safety booklets as these can be hard to find. Keep up the good work, Alan Dipple. P.S. I am also going for a full UK Mega Drive set. I'm down to my last 11 games. Wow, that is fantastic, Alan. Really chuffed with that, mate. Um, but awesome. I don't know what to say. That is absolutely brilliant. Let's see what these um, Wii games are for the girls. Pets Sports Dog Playground. Oh, my girls at the minute, they're crazing me for a dog. Honestly, the girls, they want a dog so bad and they're really into pugs. It's my fault, really, because I was watching Kingsman, the Kingsman movies, and the girls kept seeing the pug in that, JB, isn't it? Or JD? Um, yeah, and they're, they're obsessed with pugs and they really want a dog, so they're going to absolutely love that game, Alan. That is brilliant. Thank you so much, mate. They are really going to enjoy that. What else have we got, Alan? Madagascar 2 Escape Africa. Again, the girls love this film, as most little girls do. So thanks again. And that's another game to get them playing on the Nintendo Wii. So absolutely, that is absolutely chuffed with that. My girls are going to really enjoy those games. Let's put that up there. Let's move that out of the way. Fantastic. Loads of Nintendo Wii. That is brilliant. Thank you so much. Love that. Love the note. That's oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You'll never guess what, guys. I went back to Play and Exchange. For those of you that watched my last pickups video with the epic tale of Fantasy Star 2, we don't have an epic tale this time. But we do have a new Master System game to add. Because of the deal um, a couple of weeks ago, he done me a fantastic discount on just this one game, which was really, really kind of him. Um, and that is Lord of the Sword. Now, you know, guys, I'm not the biggest fan of RPGs, but this looks like a side scroll and action platformy sort of RPG, Lord of the Sword. I think I did have this one back in the day. It looks really familiar, that's why I chose it. Um, it's not as in minty as condition as the others. It's got a little bit of folding there to the corner. Um, I'm sure though, I can sort that out, out hopefully, and flatten that out a bit. But the actual case is in superb condition. What's going on? Why am I buying Master System case? <laughs> I keep telling myself I'm not going to do it, but I keep doing it. And I've got another one on route soon as well. And that's down to my 100th video celebration that couldn't believe I didn't have a certain game. So those of you that watched that video will know what game I'm talking about. But there's Lord of the Sword. And it's a good little game. Um, yeah, nice graphics for an 8-bit game. Looks solid. I can't wait to give it a bit of a playthrough. Let's hope it isn't too heavy on the RPG front. <laughs> Because um, you guys know I won't get round to playing it, will I? But that's Lord of the Sword. So we've got some Sega. More Sega to put in the wall, which is absolutely fantastic. And that brings us on to another eBay purchase. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this one. Now, I've never played this game before. And I thought we'd share that. So what we're going to do is once I've shown these pickups off, we're going we're gonna to get our teeth into a couple of Mega Drive stroke genesis games and first up ebay purchase got this for a great price i put a cheeky best offer in and um the guy hesitated quite a while and the offer i think expired so as the listing was about to end i put in a, the same offer and he accepted yes which was brilliant this is in not great condition though it's missing its manual but it's a game i've been intrigued in playing and that is chester cheetah now, Chester Cheetah, again, wasn't this one of those sort of like in the 90s, one of those characters 
like an advertisement character for a brand, you know, like um, you had the 7-Up Fido Dido, um, KP Skips in the 80s had the Action Biker guy, you had the Weetabix guys in the 80s, you know, that, that was a big thing, and Chester Cheetah, isn't he like a kind of what's it, like a cheesy crisp, um, I'm sure that's where he originates from, oh, you had Cool Spot as well, um, and then um, what was the Amiga one? For the um, for the lollipops, Chubba Chubs, Zool, Zool. How can I forget Zool? So yeah, there was loads of these games in the eighties and nineties, and we had Chester Cheetah. It's a game I've always wanted to play. Looks again like your typical platformer. It's not in the best condition. The actual inlay, those labels are stuck on. Again, guys, I need your advice. What is the best way of getting these stickers off? I've managed to get the little tiny price labels off before when they've been put on the spines and that and I've used a little bit of isopropyl just dabbed it on and been very patient and trying to get it off this is quite a big sticker and it's on the main um, cover there so guys I need your recommendations how am I going to get that off there because I would like to remove that I don't mind so much if they're shop stickers and they're nostalgic in some kind of way I'll leave them but when it's a handwritten horrible label like that, I want to try and get that off. It's talking about old um, labels, you've got an R Price label on there. My God, R Price! Can you remember that, guys? Um, but yeah, the cart is in good condition, no manual. So what we're going to do, guys, is once we've gone through the pickups, we're going to give Chester Cheater a blast. So we'll put Chester Cheater there. Genesis exclusive. Never released in the UK. So we're going to give that a playthrough, guys. And um, then that leads me on to my last um, pickup. And this is off my great friend, Pete Armour, on a retro tip. Um, he's been holding this for me for absolutely ages. Um, he's a good old lad, Pete. He's been holding this for me. Um, finally, he sent it out. Um, and it is... First up, another Mega Drive game, a PAL one, for that full UK set, and that is Strider 2. Never ever have I played Strider 2. I can remember this game coming out, and it got negative reviews. It was a disappointing game at the time. So I can remember, you know, you had to spend your money wisely when you was a kid, and when you was young, obviously, we didn't have the, the income, we didn't have the money. Saving up my pocket money, I weren't going to go, go and buy a game that Mean Machines or CMVG at the time didn't rate highly. So, I, I gave this game a miss, guys. We're going to play it, as well as Chester Cheetah. Have a little quick playthrough of it. First impressions, what do we think? Well, Pete, fantastic condition, mate. Absolutely glorious condition. Really chuffed with that. Um, so happy to add Strider 2 into the Sega wall. Absolutely brilliant. And the final thing I got off Pete, he'd done a review on this a few months back. And I always wanted this one. Um, these do appeal to me a lot, these things. Um, but there hasn't been the games that are really massively nostalgic. Or not so much that they're not nostalgic, but a game that I feel that it's worthy that I'll play a lot of. And um, that is this bad boy. The Mini Arcade Tempest by Replicade. And look at the detail of that, guys. Look at that side art. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. The marquee lights up. Absolutely fantastic. You've got a little opening door there. Um, the coin slots all light up too. Absolutely brilliant. Really loud. Um, it charges. It's got its own inbuilt battery. And it really is great. Check out the videos on these guys. Go and check Pete's video out. As he goes into loads of detail with this. But I've, I had to add this. He gave it to me for an absolutely great price. And it's worthy in my collection, I believe. I absolutely adore the Tempest franchise. Love what Jeff Mint had done with Tempest as well. The, one of the games I always go to on my PS4 is Tempest 4000. I love that game. It was the reason I bought a PS Vita back 
a few years ago was for um, his version of that as well. It's a fantastic game. The reason why I kept my Atari Jaguar collection for so many years was a Tempest 2000. Absolutely brilliant game that I just can go back to, go back to. And it's great to have the original. It's absolutely fantastic. Let's see if it will turn on for you. There you go, guys. It all lights up. Look. Absolutely brilliant. There's the screen there. What I might do is start again, just so you can see how loud this is. Let it boot up. Takes just a few seconds. Um, you hit the coin mech door to put your things in. The mark heel lights up. Oh, them sound effects. How awesome are they? Ooh, love it. Obviously, I can't play it and show at the same time. But absolutely brilliant piece to put in the collection. That's going to sit in the PlayStay, the PlayStation area. Why do I keep calling it PlayStation? Got to think of a better name. <laughs> I don't have a PlayStation in it. Um, but yeah, that's going to go in my gaming area. Sitting on the shelf because it just looks so cool. I absolutely love the design of the Tempest Cab. Absolutely fantastic. And um, yeah, the box as well. I love a good box. To me, buying this sort of thing, it's all about the effort put into and the quality put into the boxes. And yeah, it doesn't disappoint. Replicade have done a brilliant job with the box. Lovely, um, good quality cardboard. Lovely box design. It all lifts out like so. Really well protected in loads of foam. And it's the little touches, it's the little touches they do. You get your little instruction manual. It all come bagged up. You get um, spare spinners. So if you wear a spinner out, you've got plenty of those. Your little charging USB. And um, more little, like spinners and knobs there, which is brilliant. And also what's in this bag, I can get to it. Don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but you even get some little um, tokens, little coins, which I think is a really nice touch. So yeah, overall, absolutely chuffed, sick with that, and to have this in the um, in the collection is absolutely fantastic. Thank you again, Pete. So guys, that's the um, that's the pickups. That I've got over the last couple of weeks. Let's get over to the gaming station. Let's go and have a look at. Um, let's go and have a look at Chester Cheetah and Strider 2. Right, guys, as promised, we are now going to take a first look at Chester Cheetah. We'll go with that one first. God, that sticker is awful, isn't it? That's a bloody awful sticker. <laughs> but yeah. Hopefully you guys can help me out in how to remove this. Because um, it just looks bloody awful covering the front cover like that. Um, we're going for the B&O. I was going to set this up on my PVM. Um, but unfortunately there's a problem with my Multimega. I've got no picture. And it smells like a resistor problem. I'm absolutely gutted guys. This is a couple of hours since doing the um, footage in front of the wall. And I've been messing about with it. Yeah, there's definitely an issue there. So I'm going to have to get on to some, some of the guys on Galaxy Sega, I reckon, to give me a hand there to find out what's actually gone wrong with the multi-mega. Yeah, gutted about that. But that's for another video, guys. Let's get on with Chester Cheetah. It's the cart there. You can just about make out the Tower of Power, I think. Put that in. We're gonna go with the faithful 8-bit do. Um, wireless pad, great little pad. This I love it. Let's just make sure we've got that switched right. Here we go. 
Had to flick the switch there. Forgot it's Genesis, this one. I'm gonna turn that down a little. Nice little intro there. This game start, let's just get stuck in. Stage one. This is just gonna be a quick first impressions, guys. Nice graphics, nice cartoon style graphics there. Well, that's strange, you kind of, you can walk. Or is that just that bit? You kind of walk up screen. How interesting. As he walks along, he moves up and down the screen. Not sure we're supposed to go that way. C is jump. B does nothing, nor does A. So it looks like we've just got C for jump at the moment. The music's very uninspiring. I have no idea what I just collected there, guys. And we can't jump on him. Oh, there we need to go down there. I hope we need to go down here. We're now crawling into the um, sewage, is it? Right, and what do I need to do now? No idea seem to be stuck. Some B while in these pipes moves you along. I have no idea how to get where I need to get to. Let's just move on guys. I have no idea what we're doing there. But the B button down then pipes moves you along. See if we can get any progress down this one. I take it that's life, those paws. Again, seems to be as far as I can go down there. Isn't that annoying? Ha <laughs> ha! This looks okay, it seems to control all right. Ah, you can jump on those, which is cool. But they come back, so we better quickly move out of its way. See what happens down this one. I'm not sure how we go down, guys. Ah, oh, there you go. That's not annoying, that noise, is it? <laughs> Look at that, we can't go any further. Even though his nose can get across. Let's see what's down here. There's a pesky turtle in here. No, we don't want to go down there. We can go that way. But yeah, overall first impressions. It seems like bridge platformer romp by the looks of it, which a lot of these games were, to be fair. Do we want to go that way? It's just going to take us to the other end of that pipe, isn't it? Let's get along there as quick as we can. Down here. It looks like we're at the end of the road of the pipe work. So it's an interesting idea, a little different, I suppose. Let's go up here. Ah, 
oh, that, that really is annoying. Because I've now got to go all the way back up. Yeah, let's just move so we don't fall in there again. What's this? We're in a speedboat now, boys. Over the fish. The graphics are actually quite nice to this game. <laughs> I like how you get hit there. Very 90s feel to the game. That sort of cartoon a attitude that we had of 90s. God, we got away with so much more in the 90s, didn't we, to what we can do nowadays. I'm not going to explore too much. I just want to see if we can progress to the end of the level. That's cool. You put your shades on. And that exposes those power ups. I imagine we've got a time under his feet, have we? Maybe not. What's this guy doing? To... Yeah, I have no idea what we're supposed to be doing here. So we're just going to go for it. I wished Chester moved just that little bit quicker. He's quite slow. Oh, he can. If you press hold down the B button, he'll run. That makes the game so much better. See, this is what it's like not having a manual. So we hold down B and it does that. I'm going to die in a minute, guys. And there's the exit to the first mission. But it's not letting me exit for some reason. Is there something I've got to collect? Hmm, interesting. I'd imagine there's something I'm supposed to have. This is going to be a collectathon game, isn't it? How do I get rid of that stupid fish? Perhaps we do need to get more of those paws because we've only got 44. So let's see if there's anything else in here that can help. Ah, go to exit. So there you go, guys. If I'd explored this pipe in the first place. Changes the tune to let you know that you've collected that. That's quite a nice touch. Do you know what? I'm going to die. Oh no, that's terrible. I died before the end of the level. Right, let's do this guys. One more go. I want to finish the first stage so we can just at least stay we've finished a stage of the game. But yeah, graphically it looks really nice. I'm not going to try and go down all the pipes. We know where we've got to go to finish the level. Oh look, that's actually his trainer, his shoe. So that's why I couldn't do anything to begin with with that. Yeah, let's not bother with all the pipes. Let's just get to where we need to be at. Let's just jump through it. Oh, taken out by a spring. I didn't want to do that. And there's nothing you can do. You have to just wait until you fall to the bottom. Oh, I thought it was going to get me again there. Speedboat bit. We've got to avoid the fish. Oh, nearly got me. So we're going to jump over that one. I'm not sure how we get past this without losing. Oh no, down another pipe. Well, you got to wait until you hit the bottom. This is going to kill me again, isn't it? Look at that, we're down to one bar the same as last time. 
Right, that's the one we need. Can I finish a level? Right, so exit level. Is this turtle gonna get me? Come on, let's do this. Done it, stage clear. <laughs> Chester Cheetah wasn't going to beat me there. Oh, so it looks like we've got to build a motorbike, have we? Yeah, presentation of the game's really good, graphics good. The music, yeah, is a bit meh. On that first level, it looks like it's going to be a bit of a repeat. Can we grab hold of that? Oh. Cool, we've got a guitar to play. Not quite sure what that's doing. It looks like I'm rocking out. <laughs> yeah, I think we're gonna, should we leave? Just a cheater there because I really don't know what I'm doing now. And there we go, guys. There's Chester Cheater. Oh, he's back. Arrow pointing up, so I'd imagine that's where we've got to go. Yeah, let's leave it there, guys. I don't want this to drag on. I really want to show you Strider 2. So we get first impressions of that. It's great to play Mega Drive and Genesis games that you've never played before. So yeah, we're gonna move on guys. We're gonna go with Strider 2. So let's shut that down. And here it is, Strider 2. Gary Barlow returns, looking rather different. <laughs> We'll pop that into the Mega Drive. Hopefully that will load straight away. And I jinxed it, it's not gonna load straight away. Don't we love retro? Give it a blow. And there we go. The magic blow does the job. So we're just going to go straight into the game. The Forbidden Forest. Ooh. Ooh, that slowdown. It moves awful, guys. It really does. Very juddery. Which there's no excuses for the Mega Drive. There's no excuses for this game to have all that slowdown and juddy judderness when you've got that many enemies. It's ridiculous. It's not like they're demanding sprites neither. seems to move all right when it's very responsive Let's see what's down here whoa oh taken out
And I'm wiped out, guys, by some gun turret there. Can I go this way? Yeah, it's weird. Whenever there's sort of like an enemy in the... In the... Um, comes into play, it kind of... Wow, it's tough as well, really tough. I would have been disappointed if I spent 40 pounds of my hard earned paper round money back on this in the day, I really would have. It just doesn't flow like Strider. And like every knockback is so annoying. And phew, yeah, this game really is disappointing. It's hard to predict. Oh yes! That weren't annoying at all. And that wasn't neither. Or at least we got some energy there. Go down the lift. These cheap hits are annoying. Wow. I have no idea where I'm going, guys. Yeah, this game really doesn't play very well at all. It's a real shame. <laughs> it's just cheap, cheap death after cheap hit. That's where we gotta go. And then over here, have we? Oh, wow. Is that an extra life? We're not going to get there, guys. We're not going to get there. not convinced we're gonna ah, I didn't think I was gonna stretch all that way yeah I'm particularly bad at this one guys And there we go, that's him beaten. Now do we go down there? Boom. Yes, yeah, just the cheap hits you seem to like. It's like seriously. Wow, a frustrating game. Thank <laughs> you. 
How many lives can you lose in 10 minutes of playing a game? They take you out in like one hit. No, I tried to jump. And there we go, guys. I was hoping I could get to the end of at least a level. I tell you what, we'll have this last go at it. But I think I've seen enough of Strider 2, to be fair. Let me know in comments, guys, what you think of this game. Is it just me? Is I, am I just really crap at it? I think that might be the answer. But there you go, guys. There is Strider 2. Yeah, I think I preferred Chester Cheater, to be honest. But until the next time, guys, I'm Sega Zombie. Goodbye! Ha <laughs> ha! That was brilliant.